Atlas, the titan of strength and endurance. His story begins at a time when the primordial gods, Gia and Uranus, ruled the cosmos in perfect harmony. The mother goddess of earth and the father god of heaven, in their love and union, engendered the twelve titans, beings of unimaginable power and beauty. The birth of Atlas was a momentous event. When the last contractions of Gia ceased, a golden glow filled the firmament, and a chorus of nymphs and dryads sang an ethereal melody. The breeze and the waves of the sea chanted in turn, announcing to the world the birth of the Titan. At that instant, the cosmos seemed to hold its breath and stop its movement, as if sensing the greatness of this new being. Atlas was born with golden skin, almost incandescent, and his imposing body defied human comprehension. His eyes shone with the wisdom of the stars and his hair flowed like the starry night. When Gia held him in her arms, she felt her son's indomitable strength and knew he was destined for greatness. Yet deep in her heart, the goddess also sensed a deep melancholy that would mark the brave Titan's life. The young Titan's early years were marked by rapid growth and learning. Under the tutelage of his Titan brothers and sisters, young Atlas learned about the nature of the cosmos, the laws that governed reality, and the power that resided in his divine blood. The Titan soon became a prodigy, the Titans regarded him with a mixture of admiration and awe, aware that this exceptional being could change the course of history. But what they did not know was that Atlas would face trials and tribulations that would test his spirit and his destiny. As he grew, so did his power and wisdom. Still, the young Titan yearned for more. He desired to become a leader and unifier, and thus forge a lasting legacy. Meanwhile, tensions between the Titans and the young gods began to rise. Cronus, the leader of the Titans, fearful of being overthrown by his children, had devoured his offspring, which provoked the wrath of Rhea, his wife and sister. The Titanite decided to save her last son, Zeus, by hiding him from Cronus and raising him far from her husband's clutches. As Zeus grew up in secret, Atlas rose in the hierarchy of the Titans, becoming a respected leader and a formidable warrior. His titanic strength and endurance made him virtually invulnerable, and his reputation quickly spread throughout the divine realms. Atlas' rise did not go unnoticed by Zeus, who, although still a young god, was already beginning to plot rebellion against his father and the Titans. Aware that the little Titan's loyalty to his brothers would be an obstacle in his struggle for control of the cosmos, Zeus sought allies to strengthen his cause and prepare for the coming war. Atlas, for his part, did not remain oblivious to the growing threat of the young gods. Although he disagreed with the actions of Cronus, his loyalty to his family led him to commit himself to the defense of the Titans and to confront the new generation of deities. Atlas' rise to power led him to become the chief general of Cronus' forces, and his tactical and combat skills were vital in preparing for war. The struggle ahead would become the ultimate test for the Titan of strength and endurance a confrontation that would shake the foundations of the cosmos. At the height of the conflict between the two generations of deities, the divine world split and the cosmos trembled in anticipation of the coming war. The Titanomachy, as this confrontation would become known, would be a brutal war that would define the fate of the universe. Under Zeus' leadership, the young gods united and prepared for the fight. Hestia, Demeter, Hera, Hades, and Poseidon, Zeus' siblings, joined the cause, as did other lesser gods and mystical beings who shared the desire to overthrow Cronus and put an end to his tyrannical reign. On the side of the Titans, Atlas led the forces of Cronus as their chief general. His cunning and skills on the battlefield were unmatched, and his brother Titans followed him with loyalty and admiration. Oceanus, Keo, Cronus, Hyperion, Japetus, and Nemosine, along with other divine beings who supported his cause, united in defense of his legacy and his place in the universe. The war lasted ten long years, and during that time, the battles between titans and gods were fierce and merciless. The skies darkened with smoke, and the earth trembled under the weight of the fighting. The young gods and the titans engaged in an all-out struggle, and the fate of the universe hung in the balance. Atlas with his titanic strength and endurance, became the most feared warrior on the battlefield. 
His enemies trembled at his presence, for his power was such that he could topple mountains and divert rivers with a simple movement of his hands. The battles between the Titan and the young gods became legendary, and the earth and sky bear the scars of these epic confrontations. Despite the fierce fighting and the Titan's bravery, the young gods began to gain ground in the war. The Cyclops and the Hecatonchires, primordial beings freed from Tartarus by Zeus, joined their cause, providing the young gods with powerful weapons and reinforcements. The Cyclops forged the Thunderbolt for Zeus, the Trident for Poseidon, and the Helmet of Invisibility for Hades, while the Hecatonchires employed their strength and skills to hurl entire mountains at their enemies. The war between Titans and gods reached its climax in a colossal battle, where heaven and earth seemed to merge in a storm of divine fury. In that final confrontation, Atlas and Zeus met face to face, and the clash of their weapons echoed across the confines of the universe. The struggle between these two giants would decide the fate of all, and history would change forever. On the horizon, heaven and earth seemed to stand still, as if all creation held its breath, expectant of the outcome of this titanic clash. Atlas, with his unmatched strength and endurance, fought fiercely against the young god. His blows were like earthquakes, and his fury seemed to fuel his power, However, Zeus, bearing the lightning forged by the Cyclops and the power granted to him by his position as king of the gods, confronted the Titan with equal determination. The two combatants exchanged devastating blows, each onslaught tearing the sky apart. But as the fight dragged on, fatigue began to weigh on the Titan, and Zeus, cunning and patient, waited for the right moment to strike the decisive blow. With a thunderbolt charged with the full force of the storm, Zeus struck Atlas and the impact of the discharge knocked him to the ground. The Titan, defeated and exhausted, could no longer continue fighting. The war between Titans and gods had come to an end, and Zeus and his allies emerged victorious. With Cronus and his brothers overthrown, Zeus and his brothers took control of the cosmos and established a new era of divine rule. The defeated Titans were chained and cast into Tartarus, where they would suffer eternally as punishment for their rebellion. For Atlas, however, Zeus had a special punishment in store. To serve his sentence, the Titan of Strength was taken to the western end of the known world, where the boundary between Earth and Heaven was located. There, Zeus chained him to the mountains and ordered him to carry the weight of the firmament on his shoulders for all eternity. The celestial sphere, with all its stars and constellations, would rest upon the Titan, and his strength and endurance would be constantly and ceaselessly tested. Atlas' punishment became a warning to all those who dared to challenge the power of the young gods. The imposing figure of the Titan, condemned to hold the sky on his shoulders, would serve as a reminder of the price of rebellion and the power struggle. In his eternal exile, the Titan also had encounters with heroes and travelers venturing to the ends of the earth. One of these encounters was with the legendary Hercules who, during one of his labors, requested Atlas' help in obtaining the golden apples from the Garden of the Hesperides. Hercules offered to temporarily relieve Atlas of the burden of heaven, allowing him to retrieve the apples. However, upon returning with the fruit, the Titan attempted to trick Hercules into continuing to carry the burden instead. Hercules, very astute, asked the Titan to hold the sky just a moment longer while he adjusted his cloak, and then, seizing the opportunity, left the imposter with his burden once again. Perseus, a son of Zeus and the mortal Danae embarked on a mission to save his mother and his kingdom from a tyrant named Polydectes. To accomplish his task, Perseus had to confront Medusa, one of the three Gorgons, whose gaze had the power to turn mortals to stone. With the help of the gods, the hero managed to defeat Medusa and cut off her head. Wielding his macabre trophy, the hero embarked on the journey home. During his voyage, Perseus encountered Titan on the western edge of the world. Seeing the Titan in his misery, moved by compassion and empathy, he decided to put an end to Atlas' suffering. He lifted Medusa's head and showed it to the Titan, who, meeting the petrifying gaze of the Gorgon, turned into a colossal stone pillar. Thus, the Titan met his end, freed from his eternal punishment and transformed into a mountain that bears his name to this day.